you have a Big George Foreman grill? You know, I actually do. You do? I had, a, I had one for years that my mom handed down to me. <laughs> and then when I moved, that sucker was pretty old and, and used and abused. So I got rid of it. And then I just got one for Christmas, a new one. Oh, sweet. I like mm -hmm. making sandwiches on them, especially like paninis. Uh-huh. And they're so easy to clean off. Yes. But let's talk about this movie, Big George Foreman, because this man did some some pretty wow, amazing stuff and came back with a fat check. Wait, it's not just Big George Foreman, though. This it's is not a long title. This is what? Big George Foreman, the miraculous story of the once and future heavyweight champion of the world. I think they're trying to compete with your Ebbing's the, the Ebbing's three, three billboards. billboards outside. Or what about the amazingly, shockingly good? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I the Ted know. Bundy thing. Mm -hmm. And then what about the lady that lives around the corner in the house across the street in the window? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I know I just didn't say any of that right. Titles. It's because I don't remember they're why so it's long. so long. Yeah, nobody's trying to. For what reason? Could you see going up to the window at the movie theater? Uh, I want to yeah. see. I'd like a ticket for Big George Foreman. The miraculous the story <laughs> of the once and future heavyweight like, champion of the world. They'd be like, I already it. punched in the George Foreman with pick your seat. You know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't even know that was that freaking law. That's just ridiculous. Okay, yeah. let's, let, let's talk about this movie. I didn't think I was going to like it, but I did because I didn't know very much about George Foreman. But let's right. talk about it because he did some pretty, pretty wild stuff here. It was PG-13. Okay. It's mm -hmm. two hours and nine minutes long. Mm -hmm. It stars Chris Davis as George Foreman. Mm -hmm. You'll recognize him from Detroit. Judas and the Black Messiah, The Last Space Jam, you know, the 2021 one that sucked, and Atlanta. <laughs> I had to toss that in there, didn't you? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. Okay. I did. <laughs> Jasmine Matthews, she plays Mary Joan, you know, one of his wives, and you recognize her from The Tomorrow War and The Man from Toronto, Toronto with Kevin Hart. Yep, I remember her from mm -hmm. The Man from Toronto. Sullivan Jones plays Muhammad Ali. I thought he did a good job. His uh, mannerism and his voice, he had it. Yeah, yeah. Even when he beefed with Howard, Car uh, Howard Carcel, uh -huh. you know they were really friends. Yeah, um, Like, know. people thought they hated each other. They were arguing. Yeah. It was their gimmick. They were actually really good friends. Yeah. But he had his whole mannerism down, and I love when they get Ali down, because you know he's a showboat. Yeah. And he said, he told people, this is all for show. Yeah. And it worked. It did. Sonny Liston was scared to come out. When you find a path, you <laughs> use it. You stay with it. <laughs> But you'll recognize him from Harlem and okay. Atlanta. Okay. So two people from Atlanta already. Uh, Lawrence Giller Jr. plays Archie Moore. Okay. You'll recognize him from The Waterboy, Gangs in New York, and Walking Dead. Forrest Whitaker. We don't even say, for, we know who Forrest Whitaker is and everything. You better know who Forrest Whitaker is. You don't want me to run down? A I mean, you can, but we know who Forrest <laughs> plays Whitaker is. Doc huh? Brodus. You know who he is. I'm not going to do <laughs> yeah. that. Shine Mom Pre uh, Rom Mom Pre Mom Premier. Thank you. <laughs> it's like I my brain I want to say it but my mouth doesn't want to say it. Mom Premier. Uh -huh. I got it. Mom Paula, Premier. she plays Paula, George's first wife, and you'll recognize her from Black Lightning and Grey's Anatomy. She was just in one episode on that, but hey, okay. it's better than nothing. Mm -hmm. Shania Sonia Sean plays Nancy Foreman. Uh, I remember her George from The Shy. Mom. Yeah, she was in The Shy, The Wire, and she's in Will Trent right now. Okay. A show on ABC. Okay. Is that a TV show? Yes. Okay. Yes, they just had their season finale. Okay. And John Magaro plays Desmond, and he was in Orange is the New Black and My Soul to Take. Did you ever see that from 2010? Is that a scary movie? Yes. I don't remember, but I remember, I remember the name of the movie, but I haven't seen it. You should see it. I um, liked if it. If I did, it's probably been a long time. Yeah. Are they 20-somethings in that movie? They're supposed to be in high school. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's been a while since I've seen I've it. I've seen it a few times. I saw it. I was like, oh, this is pretty, pretty good. good. This is entertaining. I ain't got nothing to watch tonight. I can toss that on. Why not? Yeah. Okay. So is it going? the best? No. Nah. No. But was it entertaining? Yeah. Yeah. And there are days I just want to be entertained. I don't have to get so all deep. Sometimes I just want to sit back and kick it and just watch something fun. Yeah. So what's the summary on uh, Big George Foreman? I'm, I'm not saying the rest of that title. <laughs> I'm just not. So this is the story of George Foreman and how he became a boxer, a preacher, lost all his money, made a deal with the grill company, and returned to boxing, regaining his championship at 45, becoming the oldest heavyweight champion in boxing history. First of all, it was crazy for him to come back at 45. Yeah. He was terribly out of shape. Yes. And they're like, dude, this is going to take years. He like, nah. 
I'm gonna do it in a year. He was determined. And I'm he like, had to. He had to get some money. He, like his money got stolen. Mm -hmm. And that's why we always recommend whatever whatever your craft is, whatever it is that you do, learn the back end business part of it. That and also sometimes you just can't hire your friends. He knew his friend had a drinking problem. He just told his friend, you know, you need to clean up and then I need you to handle my money. Like, George didn't grow up in the best of circumstances. No, they were pretty poor. You know, and so, sad. yeah, he didn't have a ton of friends and this guy was, he was smart and he, he didn't know numbers, too. but he also had his vices. He had his problems and George knew that and he really shouldn't have let this dude just take care of his money. And how many times do we see that we'll see Somebody in entertainment, whether they're you know a rapper or a singer or actor, and they find out they're broke because the person managing their money was doing all kind of risky stuff or stealing. Yeah. And you have to know the business end of what you do. You need to be able, even though you might have somebody you know running your books and stuff, because yeah. some people are busy. You have to take out time sometime. Yeah. I'm doing it whether it's once a month, once a week to look at my own finances. I want to know why this money was over there when it was supposed to be over here. I want to yep. know why these returns aren't coming in. Yep. Matter of fact, where's, where's that check that came in from that commercial I did? Yep. Like he didn't know any of this until he walked <laughs> in thinking he's going to get some money. And they're telling him, dude, you're broke. You, you, and, and he's like, know, what? This movie is slightly Can't different. Be. Normally we don't do spoilers, which I'm not about to do a spoiler spoiler, no. but it is based on his real life. And so, and it's kind of common, unfortunately, but after he goes through that, then he learns, Hey, I need to be more hands-on. I need mm -hmm. to check my own bank accounts more frequently mm -hmm. and make sure that what people tell me is going to be in there is in there. And he took his wife so, when he mm -hmm. the next time around, which you got a wife, you got a good team going on. Yep. That can be, that's that's like your right hand right there. You yep. got a, a person you can trust that you're married to. Yeah. And I don't want to tell them this revelation that he had because I thought it was just absolutely amazing how it happened, when it happened, mm -hmm. but you're going to see a, a change in him. Yeah. And I just found it to be beautiful. Yeah. I mean, very beautiful, especially how it happened. Yeah. And when it happened, you're like, dude, hold on. What did you just, what? And I was like, oh my gosh. Yeah. What? That, just the, the, the getting that feeling that he felt at that moment, I probably would have been crying. <laughs> I almost, got, I was like, oh shoot. Okay. George, I'm so proud of you. I was just all proud of him. And. He was you know trying I mean? to do the right thing. Yes, he, became he was. A preacher. He's helping the kids, mm -hmm. doing all that type of stuff. And but... he's running into problems because the money is not flowing. He's got this, what, like a kind of community center type thing for yeah. kids. Yeah. And it's something he needed when he grew up. You know what yeah. I mean? He was a big, he was a big boy, you know, got picked on a lot. And I think that probably helped him become a boxer oh, yeah. later on down the road. He was a big boy. Yeah. Okay. So that's why he decided facts. he's like boxing and he's mm -hmm. signing up. He's doing these commercials. He signed up with the grill company that he didn't really know too much about it. He was like, well, I'm going to get this money, mm -hmm. this little bit of money. And he didn't realize what? He seen that check. when I seen that check, I was like, God dang it. Yeah. You're in the money. You're, you're back on top here, buddy. Yeah. So let's tell us some fun facts about the movie. So um, there are extra scenes during okay. the first two and a half minutes of the credits. Okay. This was originally titled Heart of a Lion, which would like fit. That. It yeah. would fit. I don't like it as much, even though the now it got a super long title but, yeah. <laughs> but it's fitting it um, probably would have been heart of a lion the miraculous yeah. story of the once and future heavyweight champion of the world it probably would have been ridiculous okay <laughs> when he fought michael moore in uh las vegas george foreman wore the same red trunks that he wore in the rumble in the jungle and uh kinsasha zaire now dr congo ah. in 1974. ali ah, kumbaya yeah kumbaya I said kumbaya, yeah, <laughs> like, like, like kumbaya. kumbaya. <laughs> but yes, you are correct. <laughs> oh my gosh. That um, legendary <laughs> fight was the climactic scene of Muhammad Ali's biopic Ali mm -hmm. in 2001 For with now. Will Smith as Ali and Charles Shufford as Foreman and remains Foreman's only loss by knockout. Mm. Furthermore, in both Rumble in the Jungle and Foreman versus Moore, the older challenger was trailing the younger and undefeated champion on all of the judges scorecards late in the fight before winning by knockout Foreman's victory made him the oldest world heavyweight boxing champion in history at 45 years old and 45 years and 360 days which beat Ooh. Jersey Joe Walcott's old record by eight years and is a record that Foreman still holds since then only Vitali Klitschko Klitschko 
has been the world heavyweight champion age 40 or older. That's impressive. Furthermore, Bernard Hopkins and Archie Moore are the only world boxing champions in any weight class at an older age than Foreman was after Hopkins beat Jean Pascal in 2011 for the light heavyweight championships. That's a 45? Mm-hmm. You know, the work he had to do to get in shape at that age? So he was almost 46. Well, they show some of Five it days movie. That's, yeah. woo! Yeah. That was bold. The George Foreman Grill is still beloved in many households and has sold over 100 million mm. units since it hit the market. Like mm. I said, I've had two, so. Mm. They're <laughs> so easy to one. use. Yes. And convenient. Yes, very You ain't got to turn on the stove or nothing. Mm-mm. The company paid George a staggering $138 million <laughs> lump sum in order to buy the mm. rights to use his name on their grill in perpetuity. Between the monthly royalties and the buyout, George personally pocketed a minimum of $250 million from the grill. George, Foreman net, uh, George Foreman's net is, American, is an American former professional boxer, entrepreneur, minister, and author who has a net worth of around $320 million. Do that, George. That was as as of February 2nd of this year. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah. Smart move. $320 million from being just dirt poor. Like, so poor. Like, he was so poor, and he says this in his interviews, mm-hmm. too, that he never even knew you could have a whole hamburger to yourself until he was an adult. That's they had to split the hamburgers whenever his mom would buy, like, a hamburger. He'd have to share it with his siblings. Talk and about somebody was, deserving yeah. it. Mm-hmm. And he was a good man. You know yeah. what I mean? It's like he's a really good man. And people like that, I'm happy to see them make it because they deserved it. He worked for it. Yeah, he, he didn't. Did. He, I mean, he got yeah. his hand boxed around and stuff for it. I'm surprised yeah. at this, you know, at that age that he went back yeah. and he didn't suffer any injuries. So that's kind of, but you know what? He had the blessings of God in there. Yeah, he did. He that had man, to do what that. He had to do. I really enjoyed this. Like I said, I didn't think I would like it. I'm Wait, not I, got, I got one more. I got oh, one more. Oh, one more? Okay. Yeah. Chris gained 50 pounds for the second part of the movie. He went from 225 to 275 pounds. You know how hard it is packing on muscle like that? Yeah. No, he packed on a lot of fat, too, remember? Some fat, too. I, I was hoping that was a prosthetic. I was hoping that wasn't his actual stomach. I think some of it was prosthetic and some of it was his actual one. Oh, that's what oh. I think. the gain of the weight, if you just want to gain fat, that's easy. Yeah. I know how to do that. I, <laughs> I but all of us know how to do that. <laughs> It is. I didn't. Okay, I, I thought it was prosthetics, but okay, that's a lot of weight. Yeah. But usually, what happens uh, most of the time is in their contract. Sometimes that the trainer will also help them lose the weight back down. Yeah, that's the hard part. I think some, of, like I said, I think some was prosthetics because remember he had a process. He had to lose some of that weight. Mm-hmm. So yeah, he might have been. It might have been him when he lost some of the weight, but mm-hmm. when he was really, really big. Like he couldn't see over his stomach that, sometimes and that they would show it. That was prosthetic, I'm sure. They, they were wanting to show us that, don't forget this guy's out of shape before you watch this fight. And we right. look down, you can't even see his feet because his belly's in the way. Yeah. And this guy's all in shape. And I'm like, ooh, dude, I don't. I would be scared if I was his wife, but he did it. And they're like, that's what it looked like. He was going to start breathing hard and need some Mucinex or something. But it was... I, I enjoyed this because, like I said, I didn't know anything about George Foreman before this. I knew about the grills. That was about it. I didn't know about his title fights or any of that. And it was I an did. interesting story. I remember that. I remember you know? when he came back because I remember thinking, what's is he crazy? Do? What's this old guy going to do? Like, is he crazy? Is he going to die in there? A heart attack or something? <laughs> I mean, yeah, that was risky. Mm-hmm. But I guess it paid off for him. It paid he's, off. He's still kicking. Seems to be doing well. Yeah. He has a lot of kids that he, he all named George. all his faculties. Like yes. some boxers, you know. Yeah. It's hard because you get hit in the head so much. Yeah, and, and they start getting those sicknesses and stuff that it's it, it comes with the field. But he's, I mean, he's been blessed. And the things you'll see in this movie, you'll understand why he is blessed. Yeah. And I was happy to see that for him. And how many clappers would mm-hmm. you give it? I'm, you know, I'm going to go with the, I'm going to go with a strong three. I mean, it was pretty much like a, any other, you know, biopic that you see. Um, mm-hmm. it, it's just I didn't know. But I give it a strong three. Um, and I would actually say... I would say matinee price. Um, I know there are some people, I have a few friends that are kickboxers or into boxing or whatnot. If you go to the movies by yourself, you won't be mad if you pay full price, but if you're going with other people, I would recommend matinee. Yeah. What about you? How many well, clappers? that's a good way to put it. Um, I also give it a strong three. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And I agree with Tommy with the matinee and 
you know, if you're a big, big boxing fan, especially uh-huh. George Foreman fan, you might not feel bad feeling, uh, spending full uh-huh. price. It was enjoyable. It's well it was. put together. It's a good movie. You know, and so... They did very good with the backstory. Think about that before you decide to see matinee or pay full price. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They did good with the backstory of it. It didn't they, leave me wanting did. to know more like I did with the uh, Michael Jordan story. Right. Though they wouldn't... I mean, they did good with the Michael Jordan story, but there were more characters in there that I wanted to know more about that I wouldn't mind seeing. You know what oh, I mean? Oh, Air? Yeah. That wasn't really supposed to be about Michael Jordan. I know. Jordan, it, it, was it was about the, the back of it. It was about the shoe. Right. But no, the, I didn't want to know more about Michael deal. Jordan. I'm talking about there were other characters in there that I wanted to know more about. Like oh, the guy, yeah, Remember yeah, we yes, talked about the yes. guy designing the shoe? I was like, yeah. I would like to know more about him and yeah. his journey just because he was an interesting person. I feel like they could do a whole documentary on that guy. Probably so. Now, Maybe this didn't leave me wanting more. I think they did a pretty good job with, you know, filling us in pretty good. So I didn't right. feel like I left wanting more. And I didn't even feel the two hours. I thought I would, but I didn't. Right. I didn't. And Forrest Whitaker and anything is, I'm going to probably watch it anyway. But the guy did a good job. The lead character did a good job. He had the uh, George's mannerism down as yeah, well, just like the guy who played Ali. Yeah. And I enjoyed that. So yeah, go ahead and check out Big George Foreman. I'm not reading the rest of that. Okay. I'm just not doing it. And don't forget that me and Jules, we are on Facebook, uh huh, YouTube, yes, Instagram. Check us out. Cash app. Yes. So if you want to make any type of donation, we appreciate anything. You know, it goes to our movie going experiences. You know, we, we're buying supplies and electronics and we're going to see the movies because we want to bring That's this to gas you. That's gas and tickets and, and, and yes. popcorn. And we love, we love bringing this to you. This is this is our thing. This is what we love to do and we enjoy it. Yeah. We want you to enjoy so help us out. out. Tell us what you want to see. Like and subscribe. Requests. Yes. And also, we are also on the FearCon network. So if you go to Connect to Your City, mm-hmm. click on the FearCon tab, you'll see all of our horror and thrillers there as well. So you can check us out all over the place. So like, subscribe, chat with us, give us some requests. We love you, and we will and see you, you next time. If you want to see something different, if you want to see a <laughs> couple us. of young men like do, talking about current topics and things oh. like that. What's your shirt say, Jules? The queued up podcast yes. with DJ Aaron, Aaron Michael. Michael. That's my son's podcast. You can check them out. Uh, anywhere you get your podcast. You can see them on YouTube. I like to watch them on YouTube because mm-hmm. I like to see their expressions. I do too. I do too. Yeah. Or you can listen on Apple Podcasts mm-hmm. or, or Spotify or wherever else. They're all over the yes. place. And yeah. he's DJ too so you can also check him out around the valley. DJ Aaron Michael. He's oh, on yes. his page right under yep. DJ Aaron Michael. DJ so check, Aaron Michael. Check him out. DJ Aaron Michael. We're going to have him back on the show really soon. Spelled because, the correct uh, way. <laughs> Because when we did the movie, what did we do? Did we do Juice or Belly? We did Juice. We did Juice. And oh, we yeah. went at it. So DJ Air Michael, what's up? And you might catch what's us up? on their show one of these times. What's up? I you, mean, you coming you know. back or what? You scared? I mean, what's what's going on? <laughs> oh, he's going he's to get me for that one. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, thank you very much for tuning in to our review of Big George Foreman. And we'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you. <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs>